Mm -hmm. we're hearing that they really are enamored with Dwayne Haskins. Uh, they might even trade up to get him. Um, there is kind of a connection there, the, the local connection. And Dan Snyder probably wants to make a splash, wants to make it exciting. It's hard to fill the seats with Case Keenum. Uh, your thoughts on all those stories yesterday, and what else do you know? Yeah, um, the Haskins thing is interesting because all along I've kind of gotten the impression there are mixed opinions on Haskins within the building. Um, some of those, obviously, on the marketing side, um, and obviously Bruce is now over the marketing side again on top of being on, uh, in charge of the football team. But even amongst the football staff, between coaches, scouts, et cetera, like that's a, he's, a, he's a tough evaluation. And uh, from personality. Um, the, obviously the play on the field, there's some things to love. His deep ball is incredible. Um, some of the short to intermediate stuff is, is not great. And it's a lot of trying to match skill set and what you think he can do with the, within your scheme because at Ohio State, there just aren't a lot of NFL concepts to evaluate him on. So it's hard to, you know, it, it's in your imagination, whether it's good or bad, of what he looks like in an NFL type of system. Um, as far as the, the stuff where Dan has, has taken over this first round, um, the Redskins vehemently denied this yesterday to both Grant and me, uh, saying, you know, and, and I believe, of course they will. Well, yeah. I believe, well, it's funny because like Grant was told, Oh, he has, he's Dan's been out of town. He, has, he hasn't even seen the board. Well, all he's got to do is talk to Bruce and let Bruce do his dirty work, so <laughs> right. to speak. So the, you know, both can be true that Dan has made it quite clear. He would like Dwayne Haskins. He would like it, um, in the first round, um, and do whatever it takes to get him. Or just, you know, if he's there at 15, you better take him. Whatever level that is, um, you know, if it ha if it happens, it's going to happen via and dramatically like it's some movie scene charging into the draft room going, take Haskins, which I don't think. You know, he'll obviously be in the room tonight. Um, but ultimately, um, I, I still think they're going somewhere else. And maybe this is just because, I mean, I don't think it's – I don't mind giving up my lack of sourcing – Dan and Bruce because nobody talks to Dan and Bruce, um, you know, I, but, you know, when you talk to the football side, like, I just, I don't think that the best player on their board when they get up there to pick at 15, assuming they don't trade up, which I still don't think they're going to do, is going to be Dwayne Haskins. And that could be with Haskins still on the board. That's not me saying that he's going to go earlier. That That's going to be, I just think when there's going to be a better football player available. And then it becomes that real moment where they're on the board, the owner's sitting there giving you the look like, you know, this kid, you know, I've known this kid forever. He went to high school with my son or um, he went to the same school as my son. Like he's local. He, he's a quarterback. Um, and you have that moment of truth of, do you trust all the work you put in for months and months and months that says this other guy, a defensive end that wasn't a hot prospect until the combine and Brian Burns, is the better option. And that moment we'll know um, based off of what happens tonight, uh, who, who wins. I know that he doesn't, is not enamored with, uh, with Haskins. I know that for a fact. Mm. He, he's not in on Haskins, doesn't want him. And there's clearly a rift. Everybody knows it. It's been reported a billion times. It's Bruce and Dan versus pretty much everybody. I and mean, Doug, I think, is on that side versus everybody else. And then we're going to see who wins out. But we're going to find out. And I, it's not that they, it's not that they have to pick uh, Haskins to prove, but if they if they go quarterback, I'm telling you that that is a Bruce and Dan decision, regardless who it yeah, is. Yeah, I would. I mean, I'd have to see how the board plays out. I've done a couple of these beat reporter mocks where you know every beat reporter, or they, you know, some someone is compiling uh, beat reporters from around the country into to picks, and there have been one or two that I've done where I've gone quarterback might actually be the play here. Like, there's not a great player at a position of need. Guys like Burns are all gone. I think in, in the last one that I did, I wound up going corner and just taking Byron Murphy because I think he can help them, and I think he could be a nickel, and they need that. Um, and I think he could be a good corner for a decade, a really good corner for a decade in the league. And so I – but if it winds up being that kind of scenario, quarterback would have made sense, and Jones and Locke were both on the board for me to take. Um, and, and I think one of those could potentially be the pick. I think ideally, if that's the case, they would like to even trade back a little bit. Um, maybe even if it's just one spot to stay ahead of the Giants at 17, depending on what they do, if they do indeed like Daniel Jones. Um, but ultimately, like, I just think there's going to be a better player available. And if 
Brian Burns, Montez Sweat, TJ Hawkinson, on down the list is available. Those guys are significantly better. And the other thing, too, is I think they like a number of the guys that are going to be available on Friday. Um, and, and I don't know exactly who, um, but I've been told multiple times throughout the process that while the top-end guys aren't guys you really fall in love with outside of Kyler, um, there's a lot to like later in the draft. And whether that's Will Greer, which everyone says Jay – or you know, I haven't heard directly that Jay loves, but there, there's a lot of reporting out there on that to Ryan Finley, to whoever, I, I do think they're going to take a quarterback, but it might not be in the first round. If it's not in the first round, I do think that is the scouts. Now, I don't say winning out because I, I don't want to make this into this epic power struggle, again, like something that you'd see in, in draft day or something where you have people screaming at each other, um, but that the philosophy of what the scouts and and that kind of side of the, the office, if you will, thinks versus – a bigger role and, and is supposed to take a wider view of everything. Craig, how paranoid are the Redskins about their war room slash draft board? Because we saw the story from earlier in the week about the Raiders and Mike Mayock and John Gruden sending home the scouts and clearing the room. Like, are you even allowed to get like in the same wing of the building where the war room is before the draft occurs? What's that like? No, no. Tonight we're in the, the same place we always are. We're in the media annex, which is a separate building, um, a, a trailer, really. That uh, nice trailer um, that, that's outside uh, in the parking lot. So we're never really in the main part of the building anyway. Um, you know, I, I in talking to people over there, sometimes they're a little more protective of the information than others, um, and sometimes there's information exchange with the kind of the understanding that it's hey, like don't if you if you go report this, I'm never talking to you again. Um, that's just kind of how this game works. I actually. Um, Jamie Brentis of the Monday Morning Quarterback did an amazing piece on kind of the behind the scenes of NFL Draft Info Exchange. Um, she talked to guys like Rappaport and Schefter and um, kind of how they'll have one GM use them as a messenger. And I've certainly got, you know, whether it's personnel people or agents where they call and say like, hey, what are you hearing on, on this guy? Uh, and try to get a sense of kind of what other teams and, and what everyone else around the league is thinking. Um, so that, that's interesting, but in terms of the actual draft board, yeah, they're, they're pretty protective. Um, I mean, I've got an idea of who they like, uh, but ultimately like I couldn't give you, you know, even, you know, gun to my head, like, Hey, you, if you know this, you better tell me I couldn't give you, um, who their top, you know, five are. I couldn't give you who their top 15 are. I could probably give you a better sense if you're like, Hey, this guy thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, but even some of that is kind of embargoed information. It's too bad Charlie in there because Charlie used to let us go in there and see his board. <laughs> he did. Yeah, yeah. we go way in back. There. That'd, be, that'd be really cool. Yeah. We could see whatever the hell we wanted. Are long gone. <laughs> yeah. Help. Yep. Yep. Uh, oh well. 